Jo Swinson. Thank you very much indeed, Mr Fraser. And can I start by congratulating the Honourable Member for Banbury for securing this debate. Three months ago today, we had a debate in this chamber on the implications of UK policy of relations between China and the West, which at that time was called by the Honourable Member for the Cities of London and Westminster. And uh, during that debate, um, uh, others and myself touched upon economic and trade issues, security, human rights, Tibet. So rather than going back over the, the issues I raised on that occasion, I'll try and focus on the developments since then. And of course, it is important that as a rising superpower, China is a, a, a subject that we return to uh, with some regularity, uh, because much indeed has happened uh, over the past three months. Of course, uh, as was mentioned by the Honourable Member for Sittingbourne and Sheppey, we had uh, the very positive news uh, last night and today that Google will no longer be censoring its search results in China and the lack of freedom of the media was indeed something that we discussed um, during that last debate. Uh, this is very welcome news to those of us who have been incredibly uncomfortable with uh, Google's capitulation to China's demands for restriction of uh, media and, uh, and control of what can be viewed on the internet which, uh, in my view, is just in total opposition to the freedom of information which we have come to associate with the internet and, uh, and in some ways, the very principles and mantras that a company like Google stands for, particularly with its slogan of uh, don't be evil. Um, so it will be interesting, of course, to see what China's response to um, Google's move will be and whether or not Google will be able to continue to operate within uh, China and, indeed, how the Chinese public, used to using Google, will indeed react so we will have to follow developments uh, on that front very carefully however in the last three months it's not all been such good news unfortunately and the three particular issues I would like to focus on today are the tragic execution of Akmal Sheikh the Copenhagen conference and indeed the deterioration of the situation in Sudan on the 29th of December as uh, honorable members will know uh, Akmal Sheikh was executed and uh, I think it can only be described as a tragedy. Uh, the death penalty itself is abhorrent as we discussed in a, a recent uh, debate towards the end of last year uh, in this place also. But I think in particular the lack of due process in this case and Akmal Sheikh's mental health problems make it a particularly uh, difficult case. The secrecy of the Chinese judicial system uh, is also very evident. Um, the Foreign and Commonwealth Office were not told the death penalty had been handed down until months after it was actually passed. And I would just like to quote from um, uh, Clive Stafford Smith of Reprieve, who said, Despite having flown to China to be with him, Sheikh's family were not told of his death until he was already apparently buried in the frozen soil of Urumqi. Nobody told the family how or where he would be killed. No family member or independent observer was allowed to witness his death, view the body or verify his burial. We only have the word of a press release that he was even killed. And I think you can only uh, but imagine trying to put yourself in the shoes of uh, the family in such a situation. And uh, as I say, the death penalty in, in itself is abhorrent enough without... Uh, the, the lack of proper process uh, and, and dignity that ought to uh, go alongside any judicial uh, decision. I understand that uh, Akmal's family have written to the Foreign Secretary to ask for an inquest into his death to be held into the UK, which could provide some much-needed closure to the grieving family, and I hope the government will indeed honour that request. Uh, I understand the Prime Minister and the Foreign Secretary both made representations to the Chinese calling for clemency, and uh, my honourable friend, the member for Orkney and Shetland, who has followed this case uh, in particular closeness, has uh, exchanged correspondence with the government on it and come to the conclusion the government did everything they absolutely could um, for Akmal Sheikh. However, given this was not ultimately successful, I would be interested to hear the Minister's comments on whether he believes this was just impossible to get a better outcome or in future whether a different strategy might uh, yield a different outcome to avoid future such tragedies. Turning to the issue of uh, Copenhagen, um, uh, like other Honourable Members, I read uh, the piece by Mark Linus and 
I was pretty shocked, uh, I have to say, at, at the, the representations given. The, the image of uh, our Prime Minister and President Obama and Ban Ki-moon sitting in a room while a second-ranking Chinese official ran in and out, uh, coming back with the political negotiation equivalent of computer says no, just really seems to be a, a ridiculous way to conduct negotiations on one of the biggest threats uh, that the world is facing. Um, I, I, it also surprised me because two years ago this month, the Environmental Audit Committee uh, visited China as part of our investigation into the international response to climate change. And I was impressed on that visit by quite how seriously the Chinese were taking the issue. And particularly in terms of carbon intensity reduction, uh, if not necessarily absolute carbon reduction itself, uh, they, they seem to be far ahead of, uh, of the game in technological advances. And as has been mentioned uh, by the Honourable Member for Sitting Board and Sheppey, you know, their, their technolo technological advances are, are something impressive to be seen. Uh, so it, it seems that while they do recognise the very severe threat, and of course with a huge number of their population still living in poverty, yeah. reliant on uh, fresh water from the, the uh, meltwater from the Himalayas, uh, the desertification and all of the other the risks and challenges they face, one would perhaps be expecting uh, a different response from them within the international uh, negotiations. So I, I would be very interested to hear from the minister you know, what strategy they will be adopting to, to bring China back on track if possible. And obviously the, the securing a transition to a low carbon world is one of the FCO's key priorities. They presumably have also done a, an investigation internally on, on how this could have been averted because other members have already raised questions about how it was that we didn't recognise the extent of these difficulties that China was going to pose. I appreciate this is not just something that would have been for the UK because obviously many other countries around the world had uh, a huge stake in ensuring success as well but I think we do have to ask those questions and find the answers if we're going to move forward and, uh, and actually reach some uh, meaningful global deal. Uh, I was also interested that the Climate Change Secretary said on the 5th of January in his statement to the House that the conference was held up by disagreements over procedure. Those disputes about process meant it was not until 3am on Friday the last day of a two-week conference, that substantive negotiations began on what became the Copenhagen Accord. Now, I, I mean, I, I really do wonder whether these procedural issues should have been resolved in the weeks before the conference, whether there were actually procedural issues or were issues that countries that did not want an agreement put forward the procedural issues as a blocking move, I don't know. But if they were truly procedural, that would seem to be something that really ought to have been resolved before the conference began. Um, my honourable friend, the member for North Southwark and Bermondsey, has suggested that much as the UN Security Council sits in permanent session, a UN Climate Council should also do so, and the Climate Change Secretary has said that's an option that should be considered. So I'd be interested to know if the FCO would take that forward as a suggestion to the UN. And I hope that uh, uh, the, the Minister will let us know, particularly with a view to the, the Bonn Conference uh, in June, where it's hoped that a global uh, deal and negotiations uh, on a, a new climate deal may yield better results. It would be useful to know what strategy the FCO will be taking. I know from conversations with FCO officials in posts in various countries that climate change is not just a departmental priority written on a piece of paper, but it's something which individuals actually have a great deal of personal commitment to. That is a huge asset that, that we must, and I'm sure we are using uh, in this issue, but uh, we also need to assess where it isn't working, particularly in, result of the, uh, in respect to the Copenhagen conference and why that would be. I'd just like to touch ever so briefly, Mr Fraser, on Sudan, and in particular um, the report released last week rescuing the peace in southern Sudan uh, by a coalition of NGOs, and it described the continuing violence in southern Sudan with 2,500 people killed in 2009 and 350,000 fleeing their homes. There's national elections in April and a referendum in 2011 um, in southern Sudan about whether the south should... UK relations with China, I, and we I, have limited time before the two further speakers. I'm coming to the relevant point with the, the debate, and I thank the, uh, Mr Fraser for that um, advice. I basically wanted to ask the, uh, the Minister, um, 
what his assessment is of the attention the Chinese government is paying the situation in Southern Sudan, given it has such uh, important trade relations with that area, and I think that their involvement is crucial to um, a global resolution of what's going on there, which I think could end up being a very dangerous situation. Um, and uh, I would like to fi finally finish by saying I appreciate the opportunity created by the Honourable Member for Banbury in securing this debate for us to raise a set of issues relating to China, and I look forward to the Minister's response.